Okay, I think it's actually time to start calming things down. This YouTube channel has been so busy over the past, like, two months, three months, talking about the playoffs and the overall games, talking about all the news that happened during those games, keeping up with the draft, the free agency period, all the signings, all the trades, all that stuff has been crazy. And the YouTube channel has grown tremendously because of it, so I thank everybody who has been a part of this ride. But now we're in a position where it's the beginning of November and we're in a spot where all the big free agents, they are pretty much gone. All the trade rumors, yeah, we don't really see too much of that anymore because we're in a spot where the cap is flat. We have ourselves a lot of teams that have already made a lot of moves. Sure, there's still potential for some pretty interesting things to be done in the next few weeks, but... This is Off Season 2.0, ladies and gentlemen. We are here in a period where the news is not all too vibrant. So, what we're going to be doing on this YouTube channel is we're going to take a little bit of a step back. The content isn't going to be as frequent as it was over the past few weeks, and that's okay, but we're having ourselves the topics that I just love to talk about more than anything. The philosophical questions, the storytelling, and the overall kind of topics that don't really require me to read off an article I found a few hours before actually making the video. So, we're talking today about the Montreal Canadiens, and one of the more interesting questions that you have with this team. We're asking the question on whether or not Philippe Deneau's time is running out. Because if you take a look at the Montreal Canadiens and their overall forward core, what you have for 2020-2021 is a pretty stacked top nine. And we've discussed this several times in different videos, but you have yourselves Tatar, Toffoli, Druan, Suzuki, Kotkaniemi, Deneau, Gallagher, Anderson, and Armia. Those are nine forwards who are actually probably going to be the top nine forwards on this team. If anybody else comes in and breaks that spot, then hey, that will be a very welcome surprise. But... The way the Canadians are structured, you have yourselves your two future centers in Kotkaniemi and Suzuki. Awesome. Everybody kind of agrees on that. Some people who are fans of other teams will question the legitimacy of a Kotkaniemi being a top six center, but for all intents and purposes, let's just say he is going to be just that. Suzuki may be elite. Who knows? He'll probably be good enough to be the Canadiens' first-line center if they decide to put him there just because he's that good. Not saying he would be a first-line center on every NHL team, but for the Canadiens, I could definitely see it happening. So... What happens to the guy who was the first-line center for the past few seasons in Philippe Deneau? He's a guy whose contract does expire next offseason, but he has already voiced his concerns over the past few weeks, especially after the Philadelphia Flyers series wherein the Canadiens lost, how he feels like he has a little bit more to give offensively, how in a position where he was outplayed by Kotkaniemi and Suzuki, forced down to the third line, he felt like he was being underutilized. As a result, you take a look at what's happening in the future with the Montreal Canadiens and their cap, and you see that Philippe Deneau is expiring next season, coming off of a $3.083 million AAV, and you ask the question, what does the future hold for Deneau? Because I'll tell it like it is right now, the Canadiens have about $16 million in cap space for that 2021 offseason, but they do have a few notable names to re-sign. Thomas Tatar will be 30 years old in need of a new contract. We spoke about Deneau already. You also have Armia, Lekkinen, Wheel, and probably one of the more interesting ones... Jesperi Kotkaniemi himself, the guy who is in a battle for one of those top center spots on the team with said Deneau. Now, you can go a few ways here if you're talking about the long-term future of Philippe Deneau. You could say, okay, either he stays with the Canadiens long-term or he leaves. Let's take a look at each of these possibilities here, because first off, if you're saying that he stays, this means that Mark Bergevin would either have to A, re-sign him to a contract extension now or during the season, or B, sign him to a contract extension after the regular season, after maybe even the playoffs, and before the free agency period starts. And there are a lot of different questions that you can answer before that happens. Because, first and foremost, if Philippe Deneau is outplayed by Kotkaniemi and Suzuki again, he's third-line center the entire year... How exactly does that reflect in the process of negotiation? Does he get an ability to say, yes, I want this amount of money? He's probably going to be 28 years old if he starts negotiating in a year. And this probably will be his retirement money. It's probably going to be the next contract he signs, and maybe even the last one, because he's going to want term, he's going to want stability. 
Unless, of course, he goes the short-term route, says, okay, sign me to a two-year contract with a something pretty cheap, a four-point-something, maybe even a five-point-something AAV million-dollar deal, just so you can sign me again after the flat cap is removed. Who knows if anybody goes that route, that's a very risky route, but it is an option to explore. But the way that Philippe Deneau is used on the Canadiens next season is going to be probably the biggest determining factor as to how much leverage he has in those talks, should those talks go on after the season. If they start negotiating now, there certainly is a little bit more of a question mark, because we don't know if Kotkaniemi is ready to take over the reins of a second-line center for 82 games. He did that for a good portion of the Philadelphia series, but the consistencies with Kotkaniemi, him not getting any points in the Liga, which is a big deal to some people, not as big of a deal to others, that definitely does come into the process. And furthermore, he's a guy who does need a contract too. So if you're Mark Bergevin, do you say, okay, let's just get it out of the way, sign to no to a contract extension today, keep him on the team for the next few years, and then we'll re-sign Kotkaniemi once the season is over. He'll be an RFA, so we have all the leverage in that conversation. Is that the route they go through? Or are Mark Bergevin and co. a little bit more faithful in Kotkaniemi and let's say another guy in the system like a Ryan Paling or a Jake Evans who is also able to play center? And maybe they say, okay, our long-term plan sees Paling and Evans playing as our bottom six centers. Philippe Deneau, sorry man, there's just no more room, so maybe we just play out the last year of the contract. If we make the postseason, then awesome, we ride the wave, we play this guy in the postseason, he does some good things for us, and then we let the youth transition in full time. That's another direction that I could definitely see being valuable because the Canadians have been saying for a long time they feel like they have some good players and guys like Paling and guys like Evans. Some people within the Canadians organization are saying that these guys are ready now. So something's got to give here, right? Assuming you keep Deneau long term, you have yourselves that top three center trio of Suzuki, Kak, and Yemi Deneau, no questions asked. So do you shift Paling and Evans to the wing full time? That's going to be difficult too, because you still have those Toffolis, those Andersons, those Brendan Gallagher's that will be on the wing for the long term as well. So when it comes to the guys who are on the team already, who are pretty established, who are pretty underrated, honestly, in my opinion, and who are becoming UFA soon, like Tatar, like Dino, like that Yoel Armia, there's a lot in me that believes that if we see a huge belief in the younger guys, in the prospects to be, and the Laval guys, there's a possibility that some of these guys that are on the team right now may not be on the team a year from now. And that's weird to think about. Obviously, you know, Deneau is a guy who made his name here in Montreal. He is one of the most underrated defensive centers in the entire league. We know what he's capable of offensively. He got 47 points last year, 53 the year before that. He wasn't really being properly used in Chicago, and then when he came over to Montreal, he was amazing. And for a good portion of his tenure here, he was the number one center. Again, like we talked about with Suzuki, I don't think Deneau would have been a number one center on every NHL team, but in the Habs he was, because they needed centers. So, now that they have these centers, Deneau, Suzuki, Kakunyemi, and now we have seen some disagreements, I guess, with Domi wanting to be a center, which is why he played on the fourth line, because he was just outplayed by Deneau, Suzuki, and Kakunyemi. You trade that guy away after he said that he didn't want to play wing, and you still have that Philippe Deneau who expressed his displeasure in being a third-line guy. If you're really focused on Kakinyemi and Suzuki, and you like how they played against Philadelphia and you think that's sustainable long-term, then I would think you played Deneau on the third line. Who cares if he's getting upset about that? If you're believing long-term in KK and Suzuki, you do what's best for their development, even though it may be at the distress of one of your older guys whom you don't really know has a future with the team going into the long-term. So, talk to me in the comments what you think about Philippe Deneau. Is his time running out in Montreal? Obviously, this video was just more of a case study, less of an article, less of a statistical profile analysis or whatever. It's just me talking about stuff from the heart. And that's what a lot of these topics going into the next few weeks are going to be, just me talking about stuff. Because, as I said, off-season time, it's in full effect now. All the news has dried up. It's now time for the discussion topics and less of the actual news, the rumors, and the trade bait stuff. So, talk to me in the comments if you think Philippe Deneau is here to stay or if this may be his last season in Montreal. And before this video ends, I just wanted to say this because I know we'll get it in the comments eventually. The Habs are not trading Deneau. That's not happening. Unless they're trading his rights before the free agency period starts, I don't see this guy getting traded. This team is in a position where everybody thinks they can make the playoffs, where they want to make the playoffs, and they're not going to be sellers at the trade deadline. 
plain and simple. This team is not going to be bad enough to be in a selling position. They're going to be competing and they're going to want to have all the support they get. So for a Deneau trade, I personally don't see it unless he's really frustrated with the idea of him being a third line center, but we'll see what exactly happens when the season starts. But talk to me in the comments what you think about Philippe Deneau. Hope you enjoyed this video. That is for us in Lion 9. And bye. <laughs>